Hi everyone, it's Diane from Sew Boutique and today is Fabric Friday. I have a new backdrop today and I am sitting in front of our collection of Nuance Gradation Batiks because that is the topic that I really want to spend a lot of time talking about today. Um, but before we get into that topic, I really want to give you a couple of updates. We have, first the update is on our inventory. And I talked with Bruce a little bit earlier today, just to get kind of a feel. We've got a lot of stuff in the works, a lot of stuff in production. And um, as you know, everything comes over here from Indonesia. And so it takes quite a while from our ordering process to production to then shipping it all the way to North Dakota. But here's here are a couple of updates. Docking this next week, and docking means that it is arriving at a port, which then has to clear customs and get offloaded and then loaded onto a truck and then make its way all the way up here to North Dakota. So it is quite a process, but the docking date is next week and we will be receiving 24 new 115 inch wide batik cotton fabrics, which I'm really excited to share. And maybe we'll get Bruce in here on our next, once we get everything and show all this stuff off, we'll get Bruce in here to show these off with us. And um, also we're going to be receiving 32 new items of our batik rayon collection. And it's really super fun when we have the new, new, new stuff arriving. So I'm excited about that. A couple weeks after, so mid-September, also docking, will be 24 different replenishment items for our Batik Rayon. So that's just restocking existing production and also new plus replenishment of our canvas now, this is the exciting part. We're gonna be receiving new items of our current canvas, which is the 5.3 ounce canvas. And our new, we're gonna start with 24 different combinations of the new eight ounce canvas. That will also be docking in mid-September. And so that's gonna be the super fun part of just sharing the new collection of canvas and seeing what we can all make out of that heavier weight canvas. And when it comes to the replenishment and the new items for the canvas specifically, I'm going to try and get a good review um, for the canvas. Anyway, I'm going to try and get that on our website so that we can do some pre-ordering. You guys can see what's coming and do some of your own planning with that canvas. The rayon that's replenishment, I'm going to review that because there are items that we simply still have yardage of that we know that we need more of. Um, but if there's something that's currently stating out of stock, then I will put it as a pre-order so that you can order it so that we'll ship it once it does arrive uh, sometime the end of September, first part of October, okay? So it does take a couple of weeks to get from the port up here to North Dakota. And there's a third production that is... Um, we don't have a docking date yet because it is just starting its little route and it is replenishment of our gradations. So we're going to get um, a restocking of everything that you see. I shouldn't say everything. I have to double check, but most of the time it is the full collection and also more yardage of both of the 5.3 ounce, can ounce canvas and the eight ounce canvas as well. So we're just going to continue to produce and restock and add new. It's just, it's a fun process. So I wanted to make sure you had that information. Now, when it comes to our, let me give you a quick little update on our August project list as well. There's two, well, three, basically, I'm going to talk about one today, but there's, in addition to today, there are two projects that I have not yet finished. And I know we're getting close to the end of August, so um, I probably should uh, step it into high uh, gear here. But we, I still have not finished the um, linen tank top by Itch to Stitch. And I'll put a picture up here just to remind you what I'm planning to make. And also the overalls. 
um, the Riley overalls, which is going to be made with our lighter weight canvas. Everything's washed. I just have to get it kind of worked and cut out and I'll, I, uh, uh, I'm going to ask Kathy to definitely help with those two projects so that we can get that kind of done for the month of August and start talking about what's happening in September. Can't believe that Labor Day is very fast approaching. <laughs> but today, let's jump into today. I want to talk a lot about our Nuance Gradation Collection and specifically the project that I did pick out for the month of August, which is the ombre lattice quilt pattern and it's really this really attracted me simply because it really shows the intensity of the shades that a gradation can make in a quilt and this pattern as well as several of the other patterns by V and Company because they also have a fabric line this is written for a specific fabric collection and so I have had to do a little bit of rework on how to cut out the fabric in order for it to really showcase our gradations in the right way. So there will be a kit on our website and there will also be a little cheat sheet of how we had to make those adjustments because this pattern, if you're familiar with the collection called Ombre Confetti Metallic, and that's by V and Company. It is a gradation that changes color from the salvages into the center. So the salvages are the same, and then they transition to a lighter shade in the middle. So if you were going to cut a 45 inch strip piece of fabric in half, you have two exact same pieces of fabric. Our gradation is not that, and that's a printed fabric. So our gradation is a transition of color, and let's grab one. I'm gonna show you what we're doing here with our blocks. So let me grab one that matches one of the blocks, and it is um, Black Cherry. Let me, let me grab this one. So I'm gonna show you two different variations of our gradation. This is Black Cherry and it transitions from a light over here to the dark selvage on this side. So I can't lay out the pattern the same way that it is written here for two and a half inch strips and get the same number of dark, medium, and light. So we've had to shift this around a little bit, but I'll get to that. So we have our light over here and you can kind of see with this image in front of you the transitions of shade across this fabric and there is if i pull this over here we have kind of a separation right here and then here and here and here they're not always going to be balanced as if you were to divide 44 inches down by four you'd get 11 11 11 11 and it would be wonderful to have that exact transition across the width of the fabric every single time. These are made by skilled artisans and by hand. It's not a machine. It doesn't, um, they don't hand dye these exactly the same every time. The shades are even off from time to time. Um, so we have to work within those limitations and I think just the whole beauty of the hand dyed portion of the fabric. So this is one of the fabrics that I did select for this project. And let me show you the block so you can kind of see this transition of how it went from this particular fabric into this block. So this is one of the quilt blocks from the lattice, the ombre lattice quilt pattern. Isn't that, I just think it's fantastic but I did have a little bit of challenge. So, and I did one other thing too. I changed the background piece to be dark and the accent color to be light. So that is probably also the difference that you're going to see here is that because the piece right here, see where my fingers are at right there? Those were black or yeah, black in the other pattern, in the original pattern. 
I've shifted those to be light. So it looks like there's more of a shift within the gradation as well, which is really neat. And I love how this dark, this our deep wisteria, hand eye deep wisteria really makes the center of this block pop. And this is the combination of four identical pieces that first start like that, okay? And I am going to show you another block from one of our other fabrics, and then I'm gonna jump over to the cutting table and show you how I had to adjust our cutting to really show the fabric shades, okay? Okay, the next one I wanna show you is going to be our hyacinth violet. And it's back over here. And the reason I wanna show you this one is where the black cherry transitions from a lighter black cherry to a darker black cherry. This fabric is called hyacinth violet and it transitions between colors. So here on this monitor, you can see three distinct shades. There is the wine shade on this side, okay? which transitions all the way over to this beautiful blue, deep kind of a, almost a blueberry blue on this salvage edge, okay? So when you look at this fabric, I really see three distinct shade changes, which works really well in this pattern. So now let me show you the block I made with hyacinth violet. Here is the hyacinth violet. Okay, so I didn't really differentiate. Let me let me put this back to one quarter of this block. See? Okay, so we have our our wine shade on this side going towards the deep blueberry blue over here. That hyacinth violet. I always think of hydrangeas when I think of this fabric. Um, so that is the change within this one fabric, okay? Four of those blocks make, <laughs> here we go, this combination, which I think is just gorgeous. I just, and I didn't specifically put the, the redder, uh, wine shade towards the center. I just made sure that they were all consistent. So um, if you decide to make this project as well, then you can put them in any way that any grouping or any rotation that you want, because these are simply three distinct differences in shade. So, okay. So those are the two different fabrics, if I can say it that way, or the color combinations that we have within our gradation. And I think we have about... If I were to separate, we have like 30 different shades. And I think we have about 13, it's not really half and half, but more 13 to 15 of them are the what I call a monotone shade, which is the light to dark. And then the others are the combination that changes from one color to another. And in, it's gonna be exciting to show you what I put together for this project I was able to use almost, let's see, there's 20 blocks, block combinations. And so I used 16 that were more of our monotone shade. And then the four blocks that run through the center are the combination of like hyacinth violet from one color to another. And the other ones I believe I used were the cantaloupe, which is yellow to a bright orange, tequila sunrise, which is kind of a brownish yellow to, as you can see here, it's like a fiery red. It's like a really, really deep red. And then the four, oh, Atlantis, which is a green to a blue. So if I can really work each one of these colors I'm gonna show you the pattern one more time. In the right rotation, I think I'll be able to, here's the picture of the whole quilt right here. Running through the middle will be our combination of the multi-tones 
and then on the bottom and then on the top section will be the monotones that sort of match and go into those fabrics. So I'm really super, super excited about working on this here to get this done as quickly as I can. I have each one of the color combinations already cut and sewn together. So we have our scarlet yellow, here's Atlantis. So you can see how it goes from the blue to the green. There's cantaloupe, which goes from the yellow to the orange. And this is just gonna be so beautiful. And tequila sunrise, that's the color change. So all from one fabric, you get so many different opportunities of color to to use the different colors and i think that's that's the beauty of them and i think in a way it might also be a struggle for some people to understand well what do i do with all this color how do i work this into my quilt project and that's really part of what today's topic is about cope and blue look at the the distinct change within those color ranges cinnamon brown <laughs> the one that has the least amount of change i kind of hemmed it hot and whether or not to use it or not use it is linen but i really wanted to show the breadth of the lighter shade that and how it will look within this blue and um white i shouldn't say white it's called glacier is our our hand-dyed background fabrics okay the, and I keep bouncing out of the screen, so I apologize for that. But the triangles themselves that make up each one of the background pieces and the accent piece, I am using Glacier. And our Glacier, you're going to be surprised because our Glacier, when you see it all by itself, has hints of pink and has hints of blue in it. But when you put it in a project, it's almost like you're working with a white, like a solid white. And it really adds a little bit of subtle modeling to the white um, that really, it pulls up the color that is in the gradation surrounding it, which is really fun to see. So I have all of those cut and ready to go. And then we have the blue that I did choose is our hand-dyed deep wisteria. And it is just a beautiful mottled rich blue. Now, both of these are cut from our wide collection of 115 inch wide batik cotton. And um, it's just a great way to utilize that with a fabric and never worry about, I don't know, you always have enough. So it's, it's great. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is there will be leftover fabric, okay? And each one, uh, and I have to figure this out, so you're gonna have to help me figure out what we're gonna do with the leftover fabric. But we will have two squares of each fabric used, which are 20 different fabrics, okay, gradations. We will have two squares that measure six and a half by about seven and a half left over. So this will be fun to figure out, do we do another project? Do we add an outer scrappy border um, out of these, which could actually really pull all the color right back out to the outside of this quilt and make it a, just a slightly bigger quilt. Um, but we'll see. We're gonna work on this over the weekend and next week and see what you guys think about this, okay? The pattern itself will finish to 68 inches by 85. And so that's a really nice size quilt. Um, so the, and I'm gonna show you this one more time. This does not have, let me get rid of that glare, any outer border or um, additional finishing. This just runs right to the edge of your binding. So it could, you know, we could do some fun things with that as well and add a little bit of the blue to set it off and then squares of that leftover fabric or just simply make another pillow or something else. So we'll see what we do. Okay, now what I wanna do is take you over to our cutting table 
And I'm going to show you the differences between this pattern, in case you have it, and our gradations and what we had to do to shift the cutting. Let's talk about how we transitioned from the fabric that is written in the pattern, the way the pattern is actually set up, to how we're going to use our nuance gradations, okay? And I'm gonna first show you, I'm not gonna try and show too many secrets about this particular pattern and the measurements, but I kinda have to go into a little bit of detail. The pattern, as I showed you, the block finishes where there's four individual segments, and this pattern assumes that we're starting with a two and a half inch strip and a set of two and a half inch strips. Two of them will make one block, okay? And that is the color that we're featuring within that specific block. So if I were going to take our nuance gradation, this is Tequila Sunrise, which transitions from yellow to the red with a little bit of beautiful orange in here. I really can't cut this the right way to get four segments to work in each one of these different segments. It just isn't going to work correctly. I made one block trying to do this and it ju I just couldn't get it to work. So instead of setting it aside and thinking, well, this isn't gonna work for our fabric, I rethought this whole thing and said, let's start by cutting our fabric, and here's cantaloupe, okay, which is from, it changes color from our yellow with orange in the middle to a brighter, rich orange at this selvage edge. I decided that if I cut this fabric, the width of the segment, instead of two and a half inches, I can achieve this very easily. And it doesn't matter if I'm using a multicolor fabric or one of the fabrics like the uh, black cherry that transitions from a lighter black cherry to a darker black cherry. Doesn't matter. I can make this work every single time with a little bit of fabric left over, but that's okay. So this is the width of our segment and I'm going to cut my two and a half inches from this piece. So let me grab my little cutting tool here because I can use all the measurements off this big cutting mat. I am going to show you exactly what I did for my blocks. This fabric here, the cantaloupe, is folded in half. I still have my selvages. I'm gonna take my folded edge and I'm going to pull that over to my salvage edge, lining it up to make sure that it is straight, okay? I'm gonna cut this off because I don't really want any of the salvage in my project. So I'm gonna cut that off as well as that fold, okay? And we'll set that aside. So now what I'm going to do is cut two and a half inch, let me slide that over, two and a half inch segments. First, I'm just gonna cut two. And what I've done here by just cutting the two is I have a medium orange and a medium orange. I have another medium orange and a medium orange. So those are my four middle colors. Then I have a dark and a dark and a yellow and a yellow. And so now all I'm going to do is I need two more of the brighter orange and brighter yellow. I'm gonna fold this back and I'm gonna cut two more two and a half inch segments. And I have all of the segments I need to make the cantaloupe block, the completed block down below, okay? And so this is the fabric I have left over, which is 
an orange piece and a yellow. So I can do something with these two pieces, whether it be in this project to augment it or save it for another project, a pillow or something, something else. So this is going to measure, let me think. Now we have seven, yeah, seven and a half inches, basically by six and a half, two pieces of that. That's what I have left over. But this is what I can yield when I have a six and a half inch strip of one color of nuance gradation for this project. And so each one of our kits that we produce of this will have the adjustment to how we cut this gradation to make this quilt. With each one of the segments cut, I'm gonna take you through sewing a complete unit together to show you how easy it is to make this particular project. So we have what we're gonna call A, B, and C. I've already sewn those together here, so I'm gonna set these aside. And next, we have our triangles. We're gonna call this one D, this one is E, and then we'll have a finishing square that we're going to add in a moment, and we'll call that F. So with this particular unit here, we want to add the triangles D to each edge of our center unit, like that. Okay, next we're going to press those away from our center unit and add, and you can clip and trim any of the points if you'd like. We can add now our triangle E to these edges sewing our traditional quarter inch seam allowance. We'll open these up and press away from the center of the block. And now this unit is really taking shape, okay? And we can trim this up to be, and I don't even know if it really says what size it should be, but I believe it is nine inches, a nine inch unit. And next, and the final steps is to add and attach our corner triangle. And I really like how they do this because instead of adding just a simple triangle there, we're going to grab your pencil and your ruler and mark a straight line across from point to point, stitch along that line, and then we're going to cut, oh, I shouldn't have moved that. We're going to cut a quarter inch away from our stitch line in one minute here. We'll sew this up. Okay, so now we've sewn that seam right there and we're going to, where's my rotary cutter? We'll just trim away a quarter of an inch and then go back to our iron and press this away from the center of the block. And let's do that again on the other corner. I rarely use pins. I probably should. It might save me a little bit of, of time and fidgetiness, but I just mark our center and So our seam, we'll cut the excess away. And you know, it's funny, every time I do these little triangles um, where you have to cut your quarter inch away from that stitch line, I always tell myself I'm gonna do something with this. If I just don't separate these and 
slide them back over here and put them together, I'm gonna have a really, really fun little pile of Hasfgar triangles. That would just really be a fun project to do something with, but I never take the time to do that. Here we have our unit. Once I take it over there, press it, and then square it up properly, we'll have eventually four of these units to make our completed block. That's how simple this project is. So what did you think? <laughs> Hopefully that tutorial was understandable for you and it's gonna be fun to just sit down here and just really chain piece all of these things together. I think this project really does lend itself to a lot of chain piecing because I was able to put together each one of the color segments of our gradations in one sitting. Just You just simply continuously chain stitch everything together. And then I think the same can be done for these is by adding one triangle at a time, you know, cut them all apart, do the next triangle at a time, press them. You know, it really does become a fast project. And then you're able to work with each one of the units, adding all four segments together to finish it off. And then it becomes a design wall project. And I'm looking forward to putting this up on the design wall and showing you the process along the way. So um, whether it be our cantaloupe, which kind of reminds me of uh, caramel corn, and we're coming upon Halloween and October and a fall, and maybe we should try to make something else out of that fabric. I think that would be kind of fun. Oh, let's finish this one first. <laughs> but anyway, here's another look at the hyacinth violet, which really is just going to be a fun uh, color for the center of this quilt and putting it all together will be great fun. Okay, so this is the ombre lattice project and we'll continue working on it this weekend and this next week and show you progress along the way. So, and you will see that on our website as well. Even though the project isn't completed, you can pre-order it and you'll have all of the gradations, the deep wisteria, the glacier uh, to make this project, as well as, of course, our optional uh, backing, which is always a one piece that you get to pick from our entire 115 inch wide petite cotton collection. So that will be fun to uh, select a backing for this project as well. Now, for those of you who are new to gradations and might just need a little cheat sheet at home for how to really use this fabric. You know, I showed you one option, which is to cut each colorway apart to create this look in this particular project. We can also use the full strip and make one of those jelly roll strip quilts that everybody had so much uh, sewing together to see how fast we could put together one of those strip quilts. And you'll get the whole impression of the gradation from one salvage to another. But however you wanna work with this fabric, don't make it complicated because it really is simple. And don't let the, the color ranges within one fabric make you overthink it. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here too, but on our website, and I can, I'll can i have a link down below in this video, is a free download. The download describes our two different types or colorways, I should say, they're not really types, it's a color of fabric. Like I described here with the black cherry, which is from light to dark, and then the hyacinth violet or cantaloupe, which changes between two different color families and gives you a color range that's really spectacular. So on this cheat sheet, and it's just a two pager, there are examples of both of those types of fabrics, and then how to calculate how much yardage you might need if you want to take each one of the color segments apart for example, if your pattern that you're working with or that you're designing, you need a light, medium, and dark, this chart will show you how much fabric you need to buy to get your light, medium, and dark. It's just a great cheat sheet to have. And so the backside shows you and describes how to calculate it as well as gives you a little place to put all your numbers and help you come up with that final yardage answer. So hopefully this will help you along the way as well, but just jump in there and download this um, from our website and have it near you, just in case you wanna use one of our Nuance Gradation fabrics. Now on our website as well, 
you are going to see various items. Of course, each one of our fabrics is available to purchase by itself in half yard increments is what we have on our website, as well as a special one, which is 45 inches, so a yard and a quarter. And that is what is described in that cheat sheet is a yard and a quarter. And you'll understand why we have that option on our website as well. So each one of these are available by themselves. If you have a specific project that you have in mind, we also have several bundles and packs and the packs we have available as six inch wide strips from they're always salvage to salvage because I see no use in cutting them apart into like a fat quarter or anything because that only gives you half the fun, half the color. So every one of our strip packs and every one of our bundles for gradation are the full width of fabric. So they are six inches, nine inches, half a yard, yard bundles that we have all priced out on our website. We also have little treasure bags because you know, we, we end up with scraps as well. When we're working on projects or when we're cutting, um, our gradations off the bolts, we end up with little chunks and scraps and different things. And so we also have um, little packs that we call Tiki Treasures, which are just little strips of fabric. And I keep our gradations out of our traditional uh, treasure bags our tiki treasures that we have for all of the remaining batik cottons. Um, just because if you're not familiar with the gradations, I sometimes get the calls that say, this fabric is changing color from light to dark. What is happening there? That doesn't look like that it, it, it's right. Well, it is the design element. And so that's why I keep them separate. So we have little treasure bags, and then we have cuts and strips. I should say tidbit bags. These are chunks. And so we have bags also that are scrap bags. They're very random. Um, they're a pound of fabric. And this is just, they're anywhere from basically no smaller than two inches to up to about five inches wide, full width of fabric. Again, they might have a little bit of a, you know, the, the bolt end on them, but they're all top quality. There might be chunks in here where there's, half of something cut because we were working on something here in the office or we wanted to cut out a blemish all of that is in here so if you're looking for some fun scraps of color that you just want to use in your next project or in a scrap quilt or whatever um, we have those available as well and i want to show you a couple of other projects with the gradations that we have on our website if you're a kit lover and some of them you may have seen previously but i also want to just show you again um this quilt and hopefully you can see it oh yes you can over here is one that i still have not quilted it's terrible i have to get this quilted but it is made exclusively out of our gradations there's only six fabrics in this particular quilt. It is a pre-cut quilt. And so each one of the ovals and um, the blue, which is our nautica, that's how little the nautica changes. It's one of the only fabrics that doesn't really change dramatically from salvage to salvage. Um, but it makes a really great background for a quilt. And then there is tequila sunrise, there's turquoise, there's black cherry, there is um, Atlantis and Cantaloupe. Those are the only fabrics that are in this quilt. And look how fantastic it looks. It's just, so this is completely gradation. And I'm gonna ask you to help me with the backing on this one too. I think this will be fun to just quilt up. Another one that we recently added to our website was based off of a bundle. I wanted to do something with the bundle that is called the gatherings and it is a uh, the range of fall shades that we have over here and it ranges from greens to browns to teals to turquoises and um so what i did is i created a pattern and i have a blog on our website that describes this and the pattern is simply we called it um autumn arrowheads and I just, I actually have to finish binding this one, but I just think 
it's just such a cool way to use gradations. And again, this is completely done with our gatherings gradation bundle. And um, I quilted it with circles to give it a little bit of fun dimension. And then the back, we, we put our nuance, or not our nuance, our hand-dyed Copen Blue 115 inch wide fabric on the back. And I have, you know, when I challenge myself to use one of the bundles that's in um, our collection and available on our website, I always also try to do something with the scraps. And because I just, I just think it's great to just use everything up. Um, otherwise I just accumulate too much stuff sitting in my sewing room. And I made um, a pillow to match this, as well as some coasters with some five inch, they're just like five inch coasters that had little piecing marks out of them. Because if you think about this, we've got some triangles in here that are going to be left over. And the triangles are what made the pillows and the coasters to match this lap quilt for the living room. So that's another project. Um, but there's so many different things that you can use uh, the gradations for that don't even, I have to say, I mean, if you really think about this, would you know that this came from just, I think that bundle has eight different fabrics in it. And so it really takes a small amount of fabric and turns it into something that looks like it just has an abundance of fabric color in it. So. These are our gradations. Let's see. Oh, and then a table. I want to show you one more thing, which is a tablecloth or a table runner that I just love. And this, my goal with this particular table runner, and then I also got a pillow out of it, was something fun for Valentine's Day, something fun for February to bring some of the brightness back into our home during winter. I mean, winter can sometimes just be so blah. And so I designed this little table runner that uses only five of our gradations. And this just really happens to be five of them that are from color to color, like the hyacinth violet. Um, this has our blueberry, it has um, fairway, it has our fuchsia and adobe and atlantis and then each the color that is going in between each one to make the little separator i call it the grout within this particular uh, project is another gradation and it's called terra which is almost almost black but it has hints of blue in it and it's just a great um, accent when you need something that's black or dark. Okay, let me set that back in there. But this one, I just, it's just a simple applique heart on top of what looks like kind of a wood grain background. And then I had some leftover. So I made a pillow and put a zipper closure in the back of that. And so we have um, project kits and patterns for these as well. So I hope that gave you a really, really good up-to-date introduction, if I can say it that way, to our Nuance Gradation collection of fabrics, which are 45 inch wide hand-dyed cotton to give it that amazing ombre gradation look. And all of these fabrics are behind me. And again, we will be getting updates or uh replenishment to our inventory later in October. And just remember as well, I didn't show you this time, but the gradations also make very fun garment projects as well for our garment sewists out there. So never think that this cotton is only used for quilting. This week we had a really great customer question that I need to answer. And it is relating to our canvas, which is 57 inches wide. We received a question about ironing board covers. 
as you know, we put together kits for ironing board covers. And what I've done is the fabric comes from our 115 inch wide fabric collection um, to fit a big board, to fit an A-frame, a traditional A-frame ironing board, as well as a tiny board and one that will extend out of a wall. You'll see all the different ironing board um, kits that we have on our website. But one question was, can she put together or can we put together an ironing board cover for uh, using canvas? And here's the thing. My quick answer is no. <laughs> I hate saying no, but my answer is no, simply because there's nothing wrong with the canvas. The canvas would be actually a fantastic cover for an ironing board um, because it's rugged, durable, a little bit heavier than cotton. It's just, it's a great solution. There would be a lot of waste for cutting that ironing board cover fabric because since it is 57 inches wide, a big board in and of itself measures from side to side um, slightly less than 57 inches wide. And maybe that's just the top of a big board. And so there's no excess fabric to complete your ironing board cover without having seams. And that sort of defeats the purpose of putting together an ironing board cover. And, um, I, and I just really hated saying no. The only other way to do it is to turn it and cut two yards of fabric, which is two yards by 57, which you have, that would be excessive fabric again for the ironing board cover, but it can be made with it and it can be made with our pattern. It's just a lot more fabric than you need. Now, if you decide to do that, if you decide to buy two yards or a yard and three fourths of fabric in order to make an ironing board cover, you will have extra to make all of those fun little accessories. So cover, um, you know, the a ham, make a ham for uh, garment sewing or a sleeve, um, uh, you know, anything that, that really can be stuffed to make a shape to help you with your sewing. Um, whether it be for quilting or for garment sewing. So you can do other things with it. That's ne never a problem. We always find something to do with our excess. It's just a traditional ironing board, big board and an A-frame are just so wide for a, um, a canvas. And so, you know, you will find our cotton ironing board covers on our website for each one of the sizes. And for those of you that might be new to these or new to Sew Batik, you can select the fabric for your ironing board cover from our 115 inch wide fabric collection. We do have kits made up and those are the ones that you're gonna see on the website. Um, and they include the wool batting that we use. We love wool batting for um, absorbency and the heat retention when you're ironing. So that comes with your kit, the elastic to finish off and to secure your new ironing board cover to your board is all in here as well as the pattern. And um, so take a look at those on our website, but I wish I had a simple cost-effective solution for using canvas um, that didn't really leave you with so much fabric. And I really take a lot of that stuff into consideration when I'm putting together kits. So I love the question. And if you guys have any comments on that or want to, um, uh, give me a shout on it. Definitely do. And we'll see what we can do. Thanks. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Friday. Have a great start to your weekend and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.